Hey, this is Corey, product owner here at Evisys. Today we're going to talk about inventory search. Um, a lot of you who have quantity tracking uh, SKUs in your inventory, maybe multiple stock sites across many stores, or even if you're a service company and you want to track uh, inventory in your vehicles, inventory search is a place you're going to go very often uh, to find out lots of answers. So let's go take a look. Right now I'm on my Lou dashboard. I'm going to go over to my inventory tile and click there. And here is the inventory search page. Uh, we're going to spend the whole video pretty much just on this one page and we're just going to take a tour all the way around it. Lots of functionality here. People love uh, what the answers they can get just by using this page effectively. All right, first of all, we have the SKUs listed over here on the left. So, you know, this database we're using has five, 6,000 SKUs in it, uh, totally performing uh, nicely on the web. If I wanted to browse just a category, I could go to my barbecue accessories and get the SKUs that are in that category. And then I can click around. As I'm clicking on the SKUs, you'll notice over here on the right, it's showing me the SKU, the description, the retail price, uh, UPC codes. As I click around, you are allowed to have up to four categories deep in lieu uh, for your SKUs and how you manage and, and categorize things. All that will be very important to your financials and reporting eventually. Um, all right, so I'm gonna work today with this uh, barbecue apron. Uh, as I click it, it is a quantity tracking item. So my quantities tile showed up here on the page and I can see across my different stock sites, uh, my retail south, my retail north and my warehouse, how many I have on hand. So it looks like I have plenty of uh, this uh, SKU on hand, total 26 company wide. Let's go ahead and see uh, in my warehouse, you know, where are they located? We do have a binning feature in lieu and looks like I do have aisle one has 17 and aisle four has two. So we can create as many bins as you want in your warehouse. The stock adjustments and stock transfers and all the orders will track their quantities down to the bin level per stock site. <laughs> really cool feature. So bins, So these columns in the grid for SKU quantities on hand, that's physically what you have on hand. It's sitting in your warehouse. Uh, the reserved column is all of your pending sales orders and work orders that may have this SKU on them. Looks like I have four reserved right now. So they have the customer has not taken delivery, but they do have a confirmed order for those quantities for this particular SKU. Again, we're working with the barbecue apron, um, which leads me to have an available column, which is the on hand minus the reserve count. That would be quantity available to sell. The on order looks like I do have a purchase order uh, for 24 arriving soon. And that would be uh, all your purchase orders that have this particular SKU on it. So we are expecting 24 of that particular SKU to come in the barbecue aprons. The estimates column will show you all of your pending estimates. Some people call them quotes, where this SKU is on the quote, the estimate. Now, lots of information here. I may have you know, many more stock sites in my company, but they're not showing up because they don't have any quantity on hand. And that's why you're only seeing a small subset here on the page. Now let's uh, dig into this uh, quantities grid a little bit more. So I see my reserve count. So I wonder, you know, who are the orders that you know, have that particular SKU on it? So for my reserve count, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click on reserved. And that's gonna bring you to a search page where I can see my pending sales orders. And then it's already filtered down to the particular SKU that we were working, the barbecue apron. 
and I can see that Sandy Brimley is actually waiting for delivery of this particular um, barbecue apron. So let's go ahead and look at look at that order profile real quickly. And if I go, I'm on my sales order now, and if I scroll down to the SKU section, sure enough, there is that barbecue apron waiting in warehouse on L1, quantity three she wants. But I saw that there was quantity four reserved, so let's back up. And I can also see that there is a, uh, for whatever reason, a pending work order it does have an apron on it. So let's go over to the pending work orders. And looks like Mackie Holton is also waiting. Let's just check out this order profile and go down to the SKU section and see, yes, there it is, the barbecue apron uh, aisle four. So again, we're cross-referencing as you're looking at your SKUs, the reserve count, which means people are waiting for this SKU. We need to get it ordered. We need to get it delivered to collect our money and invoice. Um, so the same with the estimates. Oops, I must have switched. Back to my barbecue accessories, my barbecue apron. Uh, estimates as well. So we do have, looks like quantity one waiting on an estimate. If I go over to my estimates button right here, of course, we're gonna search and find all the estimates that are pending and open. Looks like Jay Tyler is, has this particular uh, skew on their estimate and if I scroll down it looks like yep there's the barbecue apron warehouse aisle one uh, that's the stock site it's waiting to be delivered out of so in Abacis we do have a fairly complex way to track your inventory these particular orders were taken maybe at my retail satellite locations but they're waiting for delivery out of the warehouse uh, maybe a little bit too extensive you know for a barbecue apron but when you're dealing with hot tubs and hearth products and, and, and such, uh, the more expensive SKUs, you're always gonna warehouse them and your sales will pull out of the warehouse as opposed to pulling out of the retail store location. And it looks like the uh, salesperson put a comment on here wants this for the Father's Day gift. So you can add comments in line with your SKUs uh, on, the, on the estimates and sales and work orders. Well, let's get back to the beginning. So I just showed you how you can dig in and find out where those numbers are coming from. Really cool stuff when you're trying to figure out who wants what. So okay, we're back at the main inventory search again with our barbecue apron. You know how it, and the same thing that we did for the reserve count where we looked at orders, pending orders, and the same way we did estimates, pending estimates. You know who has that skew on there. Uh, we can also find our purchase orders really easy. So let's go click on my purchase orders that are outstanding. And there it is. There's a purchase order from the Big Green Egg. And if I go look on this particular purchase order and I go down to my SKUs, sure enough, I'm getting uh, two cases of two uh, case 12s, which is going to equal a 24 quantity on hand because I sell this particular SKU by an each. Uh, but I purchase it by the case. So let's back out of there. Back to my barbecue apron. So that's pretty much everything you can do with the SKUs. If you had service vehicles that had quantity on hand, let's just say we were looking at O-rings or we were looking at uh, chemicals or whatever you guys are selling, uh, you would see all the service vehicles if they did have quantity on hand uh, here as well. Next, we have the uh, SKU vendors tile. So this is definitely going to get hidden from your non-admin people, but your admins can actually see how much they purchased this for. So as we just saw in the purchase order, we we're ordering two cases of 12. Uh, I was paying $25 uh, per case. And the two cases of 12 translated into uh, a selling unit measure of each of 24, of course. So you can have multiple vendors that you purchase from. One of these vendors is marked as the default. 
And when I do my automatic purchase ordering, it's gonna to wanna to use the default vendor, but you can certainly override and use an alternate vendor on these SKUs. Some SKUs have, you know, just one vendor. Some of them have, you know, many vendors you can buy from. You can add as many as you want. That's the cost on the SKU. Over here is just an informational grid uh, where we're gonna show you high level information about the SKU. You know, a lot of times you guys get a phone call and the wife is calling and she says, how much is that apron? I wanna get it for Father's Day and do you have any in stock? So all you have to do is find the SKU by searching by category or typing. Here's your cost. So we already went through these buttons. Of course, I can do stock adjustments and transfer inventory amongst stock sites. If you have multiple stock sites, I can go over and jump to the SKU profile from here where I can edit anything I want about this particular SKU. See all the estimates, the orders, adjustments, transfers, my FIFO log to see how it's tracking the cost of this particular uh, SKU based on the uh, inventory receipts. All that is available right here in the SKU profile. And then the last thing I wanted to show you guys today is the serial number tracking available from the inventory search page. Now, of course, we're not gonna track our barbecue aprons by a serial number, but your hot tubs, your hearth products, your pool pumps, certainly all will be tracked by a uh, serial number. And we have a really cool search page here of in-stock inventory. Looks like I'm looking at my chemicals, my hot tubs. Maybe I just want to see my hot tubs. I'm going to filter that down. And then I can see all the different uh, hot tubs that I do have in stock right now. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and I can see how many days they've been sitting in my inventory. A lot of people love this column because they're gonna actually come in here and start saying, hey, wait a minute, we need to uh, get these guys on sale. They've been sitting in our inventory way too long. Um, again, this is all my in-stock inventory. And then if I wanted to look at all my hot tubs and, and serialized SKUs that went out the door, I can click out of stock. And then I can pick a date range. I can go back last year and find out, hey, how many spa areas did we sell in the month of December, 2018? Um, and figure that out real quickly. So that's serial number search, inventory search. Really helpful, really quick and easy. We have a lot of features here from our legacy product that we sold for uh, you know decades. Not all of those features have made it back. We are gonna definitely keep bringing back the, the efforts that we put into that legacy product. Um, so this screen is gonna grow and, and become even more valuable. All right, thanks for your time today. Yes, hello.